Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano catch up where we look back at the main news items events from the Cardano ecosystem from the last week. I do these every Friday. So if you're new, make sure you subscribe. Next week looks like it's going to be a big week for Cardano DeFi with Jed finally going live on mainnet. Liquid Finance is also going to go on to mainnet. We'll have a talk about both of those. World Mobile had some updates out yesterday as well. A few other things from the community and I will put timestamps down below as well. If you have value, please do share it out. Give the video a like, comment, questions, anything even for the algorithm. I do appreciate it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so a quick look at the channel, what went out this week. I've started to test out YouTube Shorts. Let me know what you think down below. Feedback so far seems to be good on them. YouTube Shorts are something that, a video that has to be under 60 seconds. They're optimized for mobile. So it could be a good way for getting news items, quick news items out there. You can see it on one on Jed and one on the World Mobile NFTs because there was a lot of questions on them. Also had wing riders on the channel. I had Corinne on to talk about the latest updates that they have had. Talked a lot about stable swap, stable coins. They are building a, or they have built a stable swap function. And we talked a bit about the difference between that and a standard AMM. He also mentioned about some of the stable coins that we have and some that we are going to get with multi-chain, building a bridge as well to bring DAI, USDT and USDC over to Cardano through the bridge. I put one out on researching tool or tools to research Cardano native assets focused a lot on tap tools because tap tools pro came out this week really good tool for diving deeper into the trading action on cardano native assets you can win and look at the trade history look at the wallets that are moving more or selling or buying or whatever they're doing and you can go in there and start tracking them to try and get a, an idea of the trends or see try and get into the mindset of what the bigger accounts might be doing to help you navigate the markets yourself and i will be doing a lot more videos on that going forward as well Cardano Crack, we had Army of Spies on the channel Wednesday. Great conversation with Army of Spies. It was great to get his perspectives. Asked him a few questions. Then me, him and Paddy had general conversations about some of the stuff going on with Cardano. Everything from Jed, Liquid, uh, TVL as a metric and lots more stuff as well. Took questions for everyone that was watching. It was great. Do appreciate everyone that tunes in and asks questions and gets involved as well. Next Wednesday, me and Paddy will be back again with another live stream. Not sure if we'll have a guest just yet, but we'll see if we do. I will announce that during the week. So then on to Cardano 360. This was the first one of the year, the January one. It started out with Tim talking to Vinit from Amergo. You might recognize him because I interviewed him at the Cardano Summit last year. Talking all about USDA, which is the stable coin that Amergo are bringing to the market, hopefully fairly soon. Now, they didn't give a date in this. I will reach out and see, can I organize a conversation with them as well and try and get some more specifics on the date. But they went through a lot of what it's all about and some of the hurdles that Amergo have had to go through because it is a fiat backed stable coin. It itself will be really good for the Cardano ecosystem as well. Then they moved on to the decent, the Edinburgh Decentralized Index. We had Charles talking to Professor Agalos and a few others as well, all about what it is. On a high level, it is a metric to, or a, I don't know if you call it a tool set or what it is, but trying to measure the decentralization of the different blockchains that are out there to give people an idea because lots of people claim to be decentralized, but just how decentralized are the blockchains that are out there? And then they went on talking about conversation about first principles, talking about where blockchain is right now and where where they both see blockchain going as in the fourth generation blockchains. Next up, we had Genius Yield. We're on giving some updates about what they're doing right now and where they are. We also had Paribus on talking to Matthew there about the latest that they have. Then we had Tim close us out talking about the essential guide to Cardano, the toolkit, the sidechain toolkit as well, and a few other bits that IOG have talked about lately as well. I will leave a link to that down below for people who want to watch it for themselves. So then we move to the news that Jed is finally going to go live on mainnet next week. This is a great step. Great to finally be here. This was announced back in September 2021 at the Cardano Summit in 21, where Shahaf came on stage to talk with Charles because Cody are the ones implementing the front end for Jed. 
and if you come down here you can see that they started the chain sync which takes 14 days i'm not sure exactly what they're using for that but they say it takes 14 days and they started it a week ago they expect that to be finished next week and then they are ready for launch that there is nothing else that is blocking it so next week we haven't got a date on that yet as soon as we do i will put it out maybe in a short for to get the news out quick and then summarize in another video as well because once this goes live i will create different tutorials how to mint how to burn how to use it i'm going to start getting into more DeFi strategies as well as we're starting to get more options now especially with jed and liquid which we'll talk about in a few minutes as well bitru from a centralized exchange have announced that they will list jed and shen on the decentralized exchanges you can see the Wing Riders is mentioned here. I've seen MinSwap and MusiSwap have also announced that they will have Jed and Shen on the DEXs as well. So it's great to see. And as I say, I will put the tutorials out hopefully next week, maybe the same day or the day after Jed goes live. So there's lots of questions going around on Twitter on why are people so excited about Jed? Look, Jed does have to still prove itself. And I would say always proceed with caution when something launches first. Never put too much in, test it out, make sure you're happy. But on a high level, stable coins have been missing from Cardano. So people are excited to have a new option now. And more are going to come over the next few months as well with USDA being just one of them. Jed is over collateralized by ADA so there is price impact expectation as people lock up ADA to mint Jed and Shen people do have expectations of the price going up and look as holders we would all like to see that we'll wait and see what happens it should kick off more DeFi activity on Cardano as well because when you look across other ecosystems trading pairs against the stable coins are generally the highest volume there as well and just on the over collateralization it's still referred to as an algorithmic stablecoin in some cases and I think it's somewhere in between but more on the over collateralized side because it is going to be over collateralized by 1 to 8x. Now they do say that if you want to mint Jed it does have to be 4x. I talked about this in a video before and when I put the ones together next week I'll talk a bit more about when you can mint and when you can't mint and stuff like that as well but they are aiming to have between 4 and 8x over collateralized based on ADA. Then we go to the news of Liquid Labs. So Liquid Finance, I talked to DC a long time ago now at this point, and I think I'm gonna have DC on the channel next week, just waiting on confirmation of a day. But next up, Liquid V1 mainnet launch next week with a quick testnet or two in between. So I haven't seen the testnet yet, but as soon as I do, I will be diving in and I will get something out on that as well on how it's working and my own thoughts on it. So it's good to see that their audit report is back. And if we look at Liquid Finance, if you're not familiar with it, it is a DeFi lending protocol. So money markets. People who've watched the channel for a while will know that I've talked a lot about money markets and how I want to see them coming to Cardano for all of the different opportunities that it will add. Look, there's going to be some great opportunities here, but you do give up custody of your ADA to get involved and start playing in this market. So there's lots of risk and I will be creating lots of different videos, tutorials and giving my opinion on different strategies and stuff like that as well to help people hopefully understand it more before they just dive in and go all into anything liquid will bring lots of opportunities you can see here they advertise 6x yield for ada suppliers with liquid finance this is kind of taken into account that you get your stake you still get your staking rewards when you put your ada in but you do give up custody and then there's kind of different parts built on top of each other but i will go into that in a a specific video looking at liquid and the types of things you can do over there so then we got the sidechain announcement from world mobile and iog yesterday so we knew that they were going to be building on a sidechain but we got more details on that as well so they're using the cosmos sdk and building using tendermint there is an article here that you can go in and check it out i'm not going to read there's not a huge amount in it there's just comments from both mickey from world mobile and roman the cto of iog as was the important parts on it here and there was a twitter spaces last night as well i'll show you some of that in a minute as well world mobile needed a permission to sidechain to meet the requirements of a regulated telecommunications industry which doesn't yet exist within the cardano ecosystem so right now cardano is built to be completely decentralized and a permissionless ecosystem but with the regulated industry that world mobile are going into they need to at least start out with a permissioned chain so they've gone with a side chain which will be linked back into cardano it's been done using tendermint 
which is part of the Cosmos SDK. It's not building on Cosmos, it's using the Cosmos SDK and will be linked back into Cardano. And if you look down here, Roman talks about interoperability. A family of sidechains has been an integral part of Cardano's scalability. By working with World Mobile toward integrating with Tendermint, Cardano facilitates greater inclusion and internet of blockchains. So we've seen last week or the week before, IOG brought out their sidechain toolkit as well so sidechains really is going to be a big part of the future sidechains and layer twos i actually recorded a call with sebastian from dc spark yesterday that one will come out early next week talking about sidechains layer twos layer ones why people would look to launch on layer twos or sidechains rather than everything onto the layer one as well and if you want to listen into this the world mobile team were on not that one we'll talk about that one in a second they had a Twitter spaces last night and Bibi Necto Earth Node here has put out a good thread over on Twitter, which I will link down below. This is a link that you can go in and play the recording of the Twitter spaces. But in this, she has put together some of the main questions that were talked about, some of the information as well. So talking about this was a big one. Is World Mobile moving away from Cardano? Absolutely not. We are married to Cardano, said Mickey, who is Mr. Telecoms on Twitter. But lots of good information there. Again, I'll probably do a dedicated video on World Mobile very soon rather than going deeper into it here. But good to see progress there. And I do have my node up on the testnet as well. Got it all working in the last few days. So great to be a part of the World Mobile testnet. So then on to the news that got some split opinions on whether this showed the strength of Cardano or whether it's a big issue we need to be worried about. And that was part of the Cardano network going down for a few minutes last Sunday night, early Monday morning. So what happened was, you can see here, some of you are aware of an incident last night, approximately nine minutes past 12. 50% of Cardano nodes disconnected and re most restarted automatically due to how the network was set up. Depends how the SPO had everything set up, but most of the network restarted itself. And it doesn't, this here, it's important to highlight that this doesn't mean that the network was fully down. When you hear of outages, people will think of what happened with Solana, where the whole network was down for a few hours and they have to try and get the small group of validators together to restart the network and get things going again. 50% of the network was still up for Cardano. Blocks were a little bit slower for, I think, Pool Tool has it here. Just because nodes went offline does not mean the network went offline. You can see blocks were being built still about a bit slower rate than normal, but the chain continued. So you can go in there and check out the links. I'll leave this down below as well. So there was slight delays for that two or three minutes but the network was still working away because not all of the network was affected by this. So if we look here, it says um, it appears to have been triggered by a transient anomaly causing one of two reactions to the node. Some disconnected from peers, others through an exception and restarted. And what from looking further into it, it seems there was a few different issues came together and it's something that's very hard to recreate. But wherever that transaction or block hit, whatever nodes or relays that hit, they are the ones that were affected and had to restart. And Charles talks a bit more about this in his videos. So he's two videos on it here. Cardano Stall, he talks a bit about it. And then he goes into this one here, prevention versus recovery in a distributed system. Talking about how this issue happened and talking about the importance of a recovery rather than you can't prevent everything. So one of the improvements that came in last year was pipeline diffusion, which means that blocks are shared across the network a lot quicker. Everything isn't fully verified on the first block before it starts to get shared out. And that's where this had come in. If we still had the older way where it was a bit slower, then the block would have only affected the node where it first hit rather than being spread out to the network. But when you see how quickly, for me, when you see how quickly the network reacted, that is a good thing at how quickly it was able to recover. And the whole network did not come down at any stage, but everyone can make up their own minds on it. There's definitely lots to be learned. There's talk of, should we have a node in a different language as well so that it mightn't be a affected by some of these issues and things like that. It's great to have discussions like that to see, do we need this? And I'm gonna leave that to other minds to decide if that's something we do need going forward. So then looking at a few bits on the development side for Cardano and a few resources to talk about here as well. So Matthew puts out here about 
Alessandro rewrote Nebula from Plutus TX to Aiken. Aiken is something that any developer is looking to build on Cardano. From what I've heard from the guys I generally look to on a technical side, this is something that developers should be looking to at the minute. He says it's not even funny how much of an improvement it actually is on the numbers. So when you look down here to the actions you will be doing, looking at with Plutus, the memory, you can see how much less memory Aiken uses, how much less CPU, and how much cheaper the transactions would be as well. I've seen the Aiken team come out and said that they haven't really optimized the language yet, that when they do that, they do expect it to be a lot better as well. So you can check it out over here, aiken dash lang.org and it really looks like it could be something for lots of different developers coming into the ecosystem we've seen lately about python you can write your contracts in python using a different tool set than this but we're really starting to see lots more tool sets coming out for cardano and lots more ways to build on top of cardano i talked about it in the live stream during the week about how i think the last few months and the next six months that when we look back in two, three years time, this will be the time frame that we look at as a pivotal turning point for Cardano when we really opened up the ecosystem to new developers coming in to build on Cardano. Because look, up to now, building on Cardano has not been easy. It's been hard, but there are so many more options coming out, so many toolkits, so many really good developers coming in and building and open sourcing ways for others to come in and follow as well. And on open source, we see Alessandro introducing Nebula. Nebula is an open source protocol designed to serve as a marketplace for a wide range of non-fungible token projects. And again, it's another project coming out from through Space Buzz, but through Alessandro on how you can build on top of Cardano. And I haven't looked into this fully yet, but it looks like it's a full protocol for building your own marketplace for NFTs. But even if you're not into that side of it, you can definitely learn a lot by looking at how this has been built and maybe get ideas for your own development as well. Finally, not gonna go into the detail on this, but Hydra, lots of people ask about Hydra and how it works. So this is a thread from IOG talking about Hydra heads and a bit more about how they work, use cases and current implementations. I will leave the link to this, like everything else I've talked about here. I'll leave all of them down below. I hope you got some value. Thanks for watching. Share it out if you think others can benefit. Have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon.